In this part, I will be talking about the non-local means filtering or the non-local means denoising method. Um, this is an older denoising method. Um, in DIPI, we have it, and it is recommended to use this method more for T1 weighted images. It does work for diffusion weighted images too, but um, for uh, like there are better methods. Over the years, people came up with better schemes. So I'm gonna keep this particular tutorial short. In the next parts, I'll be talking about the PCA-based methods and self-supervised learning-based methods in the one after that. So for non-local means, um, the idea that Borders et al. came up with is that um, you don't, like there is no reason to expect that the local neighborhood of a particular pixel would be more or less similar. Like for example, it could happen that um, in an edge, like filters, that, uh, sorry, pixels that are at the edge of um, like the CSF and the white matter interface or white matter gray matter interfaces um, have sharp transitions, right? And um, rather you could group pixels that are not uh, close to one another, but are the far away and distributed in the image. So for example, if I, I took like example, neighborhoods in uh, here, which have a similar intensity value, somewhere in the white matter, which has a similar intensity value and the gray matter. And the idea is that you want similar patches to have uh, a higher weight and the rest of them to have a smaller weight. And how this is done, we'll take a, take a look at it in the next slides. So in non-local means, what we want to do is that given a noisy image and selecting like for denoising a particular patch P, you want to represent this P as a weighted combination of Q1, Q2, and Q3, right? You want to uh, estimate the value of P based on these values. Um, the idea is that Q1 and Q2 are going to have a higher influence on P and Q3, Q3 being farther away and having distinct, um, rather a more different intensity value. Uh, would have a smaller influence. Um, and this is the in general like 2D case in which how non, like showing how non-local means works. It's quite good. Um, it does, you can still see some structure in the residual of the noise removed from the image. Um, you have to play around with the parameter quite uh, parameters of the algorithm quite a bit, but uh, yeah, it does work quite well. And there is some structure removed, but it's still like it, it does a very good job. Um, this is how we can look at the formulation of non-local means, which I've adopted from the original non-local means paper. Um, say you represented all the pixels in a noisy image, then each pixel is represented as a weighted combination of all the other pixels in the image, okay? And um, the similarity is computed on the basis of a weight function, which we will see in the next slide. So this weights are defined by a distribution that looks like this, where ZI is the normalization factor and uh, a normalization constant. And you want to compute the, like the farther away a particular pixel from the one which you want to denoise, um, the smaller the weight you want to give it. And this is the, um, parameter that you end up tuning, it is like it acts as a degree of filtering, the H square, that is the variance. And um, yeah, so this is a, a more rather a newer version of non-local means, which has been optimized for denoising MRI data. Um, in the paper, they use, I believe, T1 weighted images. Here is the paper by Pierre Coupe et al. Um, basically, they took the 2D formulation and uh, made it a 3D formulation with additional uh, advantages such as automatic parameter tuning, um, like a better strategy to select the um, similar pixels, like relevant pixels to assign higher or lower weights to the ones which you want to denoise. Um, it has a blockwise implementation. So instead of having 2D patches, as is the case for 2D images, now you would have 3D blocks and it is parallelized. Um, now let's take a look at how this is implemented in DIPA. Let's take a look at how non-local means is implemented in DIPA. Uh, 
So to, to use non-local means, you need to import two things. One is the non-local means algorithm that is within the non-local means module in the denoise, uh, in the denoise module of type I. And here is the noise estimate that is required to estimate the standard deviation of noise for um, non-local means denoising. Um, so in the cell, I have just imported the standard data set, loaded the NFT file. It is a T1 weighted image. Um, then I use estimate sigma to get the standard deviation of the noise. The only parameter it requires is N. N, is, N stands for the number of receiver coils in your data. Um, if you don't know the number of receiver coils, playing around with this parameter is more or less equivalent to playing, playing around with the standard deviation of noise. So if I set this to zero, um, it is, I, I think it is required, uh, it would assume that your acquisition is sense. Um, and so then you, you can also play around with the patch radius and the block radius for doing the non-local means denoising. As you can see, it is super fast, it takes literally uh, point, point 0.6 seconds. Um, this is the value of the standard deviation of noise and that is estimated by the system at sigma function. And this is what the denoise output looks like. So uh, this was the noise AT1 image that I gave as input. Uh, this is the denoised one. And here is the noise removed. As you can see, um, there is some structure that you can see in the center section of the slice. Um, but like playing around with the parameter will more or less make this look more random and it can change from data set to data set. Uh, 